In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I breed the Nothobronchius rachovi killifish. Don't even know if I said that right, but these are an annual killifish. So in the wild, these guys spawn in the substrate and eventually where they're from, there's a dry season and all the ponds dry up and the fish die and the eggs stay in the dried substrate and then in the rain, rainy season when it rains and the puddles reform the eggs actually hatch you know surviving several months in the dirt which is pretty cool so because of that life cycle that they have these guys they're called annual killifish so they only live about a year maybe get a little bit more out of them but that's why it's important to breed these guys if you want to keep them so this is the breeding setup that I have right now. So that's obviously the male, very pretty. And the female, she's got some blue spangling, uh, but you know, nothing compared to the male. But this is a 10 gallon tank. Um, I run my fish room with matten filters on the 10 gallons, but a sponge filter would be just fine. I keep the water flow low for these guys, since I'm assuming that's what it's like in the wild in the ponds or little streams that they're in. And what I have in here is a container with some peat moss in it. And the male is going to entice the female. I'll add some footage now of them breeding, but they'll put their eggs in that peat moss and then we want to collect that peat moss. To condition these guys to breed, I just feed them Frozen bloodworms, frozen brine shrimp, even get some live baby brine since I have that running in the fish room anyway. And I noticed that it's important to have some kind of cover for the female to be able to get away from the male. Notice I did have a second female in here that before I had anything, I think he was just too aggressive with her and trying to breed and unfortunately we lost her. But now I have like flo floating plants in here just to provide some cover and give the female a break. When I first had this set up, there wasn't any peat moss on the bottom and there wasn't any substrate at all. But since they've been breeding and splashing around, some of that has gone all over. So I'm gonna take this container out and suck up all that substrate to get any eggs that might be in there. And we'll show you how to do that. So what I'm going to do is just slowly remove this container from the water. I don't want any of that peat to really come out. I also noticed a bunch of eggs on the bottom here with that peat moss that was splashed around from them breeding. So I'm actually going to siphon these out. I'm going to put the end of the siphon in this bag here and catch all that peat moss. So I have the peat moss that I caught from siphoning out on the bottom and I've got our container here. So ideally you would have some kind of filter bag that is a little bit of a finer mesh than this, but this is all I have right now. I'm gonna just dump this all through. And then we're gonna to wanna to get all the water out of this peat moss. You just give it a good squeeze. The eggs are pretty tough, so they can handle a little bit of squeezing there. You wanna get this as dry as possible because in the wild, what happens is that it's the dry season, so the pond completely dries up. So these eggs will incubate completely dry. So I just spread it out on a piece of paper here. Helps it dry, but I like to let it air dry for about 10 minutes. And then I also like to check and make sure that I do have eggs. So if we look really closely, you can see that one egg in the center of the screen. And there should be a bunch in here. 
but I'm not going to go through and look through them all. I just like to check and make sure that I have, I could see a couple with the naked eye and then I'll bag them up. So I moved the peat into a freezer Ziploc bag and I just labeled it to make sure I know what species it is and what date I collected it. You want to make sure you don't really have any air in there or any moisture. And for this species online, it says anywhere from three to six months. So I just, I try at four months. And if you don't get any success in the first one, you could actually dry the peat and try again in a couple more weeks. So if that helped you out, um, leave a like and we'll see you in the next video.